Hello, it's great to be with you back here on the planet. <laughs> the first thing uh, is, is your health update. Tell me about how you're feeling, uh, how you're walking, how you're adjusting to gravity. You know, it is it's much more difficult than most people would think, and it's even uh, harder and, and slower than, than I had hoped. Uh, my balance is confused. Um, my, uh, my, all the fine motor skills, you know, just to, to have a drink of water, to grab this and, and fight gravity and bring it up to my mouth, I haven't used any of those little muscles for five months, so every little thing is wrong. And just to be able to walk, I'm still weaving. Uh, I need about, gosh, 50% more sleep than normal. It's as if I'm recovering from a pretty deep illness. And uh, I was talking to uh, a couple of the guys who've done this before yesterday at a get-together, and they said it took about four months before they felt normal. And I can really see why. It is, it is a very difficult rehab process, and I'm, I'm just starting into it. Is it more difficult to play guitar with gravity? <laughs> I played guitar last night with, with uh, I play in a band down here. We got together uh, socially last night, which was great. Um, I found I don't have uh, my normal lung power. I, I only have about half of what I would normally have for just straight diaphragm pressure. Guitar though, fortunately, I got to play that Larry Vey on orbit a lot. And uh, just straight playing guitar is weird. Although it's strange to have a guitar that weighs so much. Uh, you know, just this big heavy guitar in my lap but uh, my hands still remember how to play and uh, oh we lost it was actually a little comforting to have a guitar that didn't keep uh, floating itself out of the way uh, but it like everything else uh, is one of the joys to come back to and I'll, I'll be readapted to it fairly soon space oddity uh, took on a life of its own uh, tell me a little bit about that and tell me a little bit about the reaction even today well, it, it's an iconic song, of course, right from the, the peak of the space age, you know, back when, when the Jetsons and I Dream of Genie and, uh, of course, Space Odyssey, that it's, it's uh, sort of named after, when those were at their very peak, um, and, and it's sort of superimposed across a, a new rising pop star and, and the, the, uh, the social imagery and, and values of the late 60s, all of that was put together into oddity. So... Uh, when I got to orbit, my son, who was managing my uh, social media, said, Dad, there's a huge interest in you recording Space Oddity while you're in orbit. And my first reaction was, well, why? You know, that, that's uh, a nice old song, but how does that have anything to do with what I'm doing? But uh, he convinced me that it would be a good <laughs> idea. And, of course, there was a lot of um, uh, legal issues to be able to record someone else's song and make sure that it, it served everyone's purposes and didn't get in the way of the actual work that I was doing. Um, and we, we found a way to do it in a mix with all of the, you know, all the other things that you actually do on a space station that you're actually there for. But I'm really pleased with it. Uh, I was proud of the musicality of it. I was surprised with M. Griner and Joe Corcoran, the, the wonderful musical job they did with the track that I laid down on orbit. And we were very pleased as a group, as a trio with the, uh, with the finished product. My son had rewritten the words um, so that I didn't die in the end, <laughs> which is an original song. And, um, and then it was just a matter of, of what and how would be the best way to, to spread it to the world. And everyone, including the Canadian Space Agency, agreed this would be a nice project for my son to release uh, to YouTube. And uh, it's been, uh, you know, the real meaning of the word stupefying to see the reaction to it. I mean, it's been seen approaching 14 million times just on YouTube, but all sorts of people have rebroadcast it from the air, at least segments of it. So the echo of that song is enormous. And what's important to me is the space station is a magnificent laboratory. It, we are doing stuff up there that is unprecedented and impossible to do anywhere else. But it's not just robotics. It's not just uh, simple stuff. It is also a magnificent new human experience. And somehow, by being able to take sort of a touchstone of an iconic um, image like Space Oddity on Earth and recreate or at least use that stage of a new human place like the space station to reanalyze that one song, turn out a, a good musical product, but also make people think, I was amazed at, at how that has, has really struck a chord all around the world and continues to. It was by no means the purpose of why we were there, but I think it's a really nice way for people to see some of the different possibilities that exist with a space station. It's not just a laboratory, it's a new place for humanity, and we need to look at it you know, more globally 
And uh, with all of the work that I did to try and include the whole world in what the space station is doing, it, it almost it's almost as if we planned it that way. We, we did not, but <laughs> Space Oddity was really a nice way to wrap it all up together. Yeah, it gave people something they could identify with, for sure. Yeah, and, and something that, you know, that you can sing along with that sort of is an absolute bridge between the, the science but also the regular everyday life of what people pay attention to and listen to. It worked out great. Um, your thoughts when you passed over Toronto and, and maybe even Milton. By the way, by the way, we did show you live sometimes on air going over and you never waved. <laughs> I waved every time I went over. My, uh, my son, who, who looks at all the things that I downlink, of course, Evan, he said, Dad, we have enough pictures of Southern Ontario now. <laughs> but um, but I, I just I couldn't take enough. Um, one, of course, because it's where I'm from and where a lot of my family lives. But two, also because it's, um, it's where my heart is. And to be able to see it from a different perspective, to be able to see the Niagara Peninsula as true truly a little isthmus of land in between Lake Erie and Lake Ontario with the Niagara uh, Gorge joining them. To be able to see uh, one glance looking right across from the Finger Lakes to Lake Superior. To be able to see Sarnia, of course, where I was born, and Milton, where I grew up. Those two t towns in true context, both geographic and geologic, depending on the angle of the sun and the season, and watch winter turn to spring. Uh, to be able to pick out my dad's airstrip where he flies his biplane off the farm there near Milton, to be able to see those things, you know, it's a big, busy place, this station. We're going around the world every 90 minutes, but it's it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like having a really sweet candy every so often of being able to see something as personal to me uh, in a whole new way on a regular recurring basis every day. So I, I paid extra attention. I, I know you have a stockpile of pictures. Uh, what are the chances maybe tomorrow or Tuesday you could tweet out something fresh of, uh, of uh, the GTA? I, I would love to. I, um, I sent down, I don't know what the number is exactly, but it's, you know, it's in the 40 to 50,000 picture range. Um, I've sent them all to the ground, but of course I, they don't end up in my hands immediately. I don't have access to any of them right yet. I only have some that I already sent down to the earth that then I can pick from, a very small handful. But uh, uh, I actually went out and bought a, a two terabit drive yesterday so that I can get those pictures so I can start sorting through them because I only could share a, a tiny fraction of what the world looks like. And there are so many pictures, uh, and pictures, you know, a thousand words, but of course there's so, the, the angle of the sun and the, the nature of it is they're not just pictures anymore. Some of them are, they're almost uh, a naturally artistic interpretation of the world. And and so I really want to go through them and not just the ones that I grabbed when I was in a hurry on station, but think about them and really choose ones that mean things and start showing those to the world. But it's going to take time. <laughs> time is at a premium right now, but I, I still don't even have them in my hands. But as soon as I do, I'll be going through them. And of course, I'll be looking for uh, the greater Toronto area as, uh, as, you know, it's where that Southern Ontario is where I'm from, and it'll be an important image to get, to get out there, especially because some of them right at the end were in, the, bl in the, the blush of spring, and I really want to show those pictures. I think there's probably some kid out there that maybe you have already swayed to maybe have an interest in becoming an astronaut. So let's say there's some kid right now, growing up on a farm in Milton, Oshawa, Ajax, I want to be an astronaut, Mom. What, what would you tell him or her? Well, there's a school just north of Oshawa, in fact, a newly built school that they're naming for me. And there's already a Chris Hadfield school, but I'm certain, uh, you know, when, when folks consider that what I've done to be valid and significant enough to name a public school after me, uh, of course, it's an enormous honor and a responsibility, but also it's an indication of the level of inspiration that, that I've tried to generate. And so I get regular feedback all the time uh, from young kids who are asking me, how do I do things like you've done? How do I do stuff with my life? And I really just have three main cornerstones that I think if you just sort of keep them in mind every day, they'll help guide you. Number one is take care of your body. You only get one. You don't have to go crazy. Just uh, be a little bit careful. When you put food in your mouth, think about it and take the stairs and carry things and, and exercise your body a little. Don't be lazy. So, if you do that every day, you don't have to have some huge workout regime. Number two is uh, get an education. 
you have to challenge your mind and learn things and understand things. And whatever level is of interest to you, but the more deep and complex your education is, and you do it every day, um, then of course the more capability you have. And then the, so keep care of your body, get an advanced education, challenge your mind. And then the third is practice making decisions and sticking with them. Uh, learn, decision making is a skill. And uh, you can just sort of buffer your way through life and just let things sort of happen. And, and you, you kind of insulate yourself from choosing things. But learn how to, the process by which you make decisions. And when you make them a little more often, you make better ones. And then stick by the decisions that you've made. And if you do those three things, uh, keep your body in shape, get educated, and learn how to make good decisions, it'll set you up for uh, dealing with every single day better. And maybe it'll also help you get closer to the things that you dream of doing with your life. It, it, it worked in my case. OK, uh, I'm putting an open invitation out to you. When you do come to Toronto, and I, I know you will at some point in the near future, I want you to stop by Breakfast Television and uh, have a sit down and a chat with, uh, with me and Dina. I, I, I would love to. And uh, I look forward to it. But you can imagine the. Uh, the testing that I'm going through right now, the physical rehab. We have months of technical debriefs. I have to debrief over in Russia, of course, back to the Canadian Space Agency. Uh, but uh, it's just a matter of time, and I really look forward to coming and visit you in person. Th thanks for the invitation to visit with you today. All right, and you're about to break a million on uh, Twitter followers, <laughs> yeah. too. So let's get everybody following CMDR underscore Hatfield. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm really pleased that that many people found what I did of interest, and, uh, and I think uh, there's a lot of stuff there for people to think about, and I'm pleased that uh, that so many folks watched what happened in space and are watching now. All right, good luck with your recuperation, Commander, and thank you for this. Thanks very much. I'll take all the luck I can get. <laughs>